I picked this mower up for 20 bucks. You take those off too. You don't have to remove this guard on top. It'll come off as a, a single unit. What I'm going to do on this one is just replace this carb. I'm not going to worry about rebuilding it. I rarely rebuild carbs when I'm working on stuff like this. It takes time and it's easier just to put a new carb on it. And then in the off season, when things slow down a little bit, I'll take these carbs and I'll clean them up and I'll use them on next year's mowers. Now I've already had that off, but your linkage would be hooked up on here normally. One thing I want to show you here on these carbs. So this is the carb that came off of this mower. And this is a carburetor that uses a primer bulb instead of an auto choke. This mower comes with two different types of systems on it. It comes with a primer bulb, uh, which will not have a choke. And it comes with this one here, which does have a choke. Got your throttle linkage here. And then this one will have a, a choke linkage. And this hooks up to an auto choke. Hooks up to the air vein on the mower and it opens and closes. So I've got the new one here. Notice it does not have a choke and this hole is not drilled anyway you got two different versions i'll try to provide some part numbers in the description you can see here the main difference is one has a choke on it and one does not this one we're using the one with the primer bulb so this is the correct one here this kit also comes with a new rubber o-ring that goes on the back side here generally pull that off there and change that out slide it on there before you try to put the carburetor on the other thing that comes with is your gasket for the outside of this carburetor and this can be critical if you're having issues with your primer bulb not working because your primer bulb uses this hole here to force gas down in there to get this thing started what i'll do is hook the linkage up first so you can roll the carburetor around where you need it to Get that on there, slide that up there, and then you can put your bolts back in. The bigger bolts go into the carburetor to hold it onto the block. Make sure you get these started just finger tight so you don't cross thread them. It is just aluminum, so if you don't get this started in there straight, it's pretty easy to cross thread it. Once you got them turned in three or four threads, just snug them down. It doesn't take much to seal these. You don't have to over tighten these. And tighten them down about the same on both sides before you really tighten them down. And I just say two fingers. A strong two fingers, and that's really all you need on these things. You don't need a whole lot. I didn't drain the tank on this, and I just stick a uh, 5 16 bolt in the end of it just so it doesn't leak. That way you don't have to worry about draining the tank to do this. It'll leak when you take this out, so keep that above here. And just get it on there real quick. Make sure everything's out of the way. Just get it on there as quick as you can, and you're good to go. And again, you could clamp that shut so you don't leak any gas. But... Now, when you put this back on, Check this little vacuum tube right here to make sure it doesn't have any cracks. Make sure this is good. Make sure this gasket's good. And also make sure your primer bulb here is good. It should be good and pliable. All you do, there's a little tab right here, two of them. There's one on this bottom side, one on the top side. You push that up in there, push this up in here. And just kind of work this out. It's snug. It's not going to just fall out. You can get in behind it here. Don't cock it sideways or it'll get really stuck in there. But these are pretty easy to change. I'm not going to change it. I'm going to put this same one back in. No reason to change that. It's still good and pliable. Pull the rubber part of your ball tight up against the back of that so the back of this clip is far down. In other words, what I'm saying is don't try to push this in there like that. If you push this through the center, you're never going to get that clip all the way in there. So pull this all the way through that so that the clip is the farthest part back. And then when you push this in here, you've got your grooves top and bottom. Make sure you line that up as best you can. And then when you push that in, push the clip itself in. Use a screwdriver. If you got it lined up good, it should click right down in there. Don't run your screwdriver through your primer bulb, but you'll hear that click. That's in there. Same thing on the other side. Again, make sure your screwdriver is on the, the plastic, not the primer bulb. And then there you go, that clicks right into place. So that's how you change that primer bulb. That's pretty easy to change if you've got a bad one. And the primer bulb itself is relatively inexpensive. When you go to put this back on here, you've got a hose here to hook up to your crankcase vent. Make sure that's on there. Make sure your linkage is on your carb. Your spring's still hooked up here. This gasket is good. We got a good primer bulb. And this goes over the top of that. And put your uh, cover bolts back in for your air cleaner housing. About now, make sure you don't have any parts left over you weren't expecting. Make sure you drop at least one bolt. Just for reference, I'm just looking at the tag here. If you guys aren't familiar with how to read MTD or Craftsman tags, the first two numbers are the date that it was made, the second two numbers are the day, and the third two numbers are the year. So this was made in March 20th of 2006. So this is a 2006 mower, currently 2021 while I'm working on it. So it's uh, you know a few years old, but still a good old mower. 
make sure that's all lined up before you tighten it down because that gasket underneath there has to be lined up perfectly for your primer bolt to work. And some of these new carburetors are not threaded too, so you have to kind of cut the threads into it as you tighten the bolts down. So if they start binding up, back them out a little bit and then tighten them down again. Just keep going back and forth until you get it all the way in. This one doesn't seem too bad, but some of these will be pretty tight. I've seen so many people strip bolts out because they over tighten them. So you know, that's snug now. And like I said, you can always come back and tighten these back down again. If you go to fire this thing up and the prior bulb's not working, you can always tighten it up. Also, while you're here, make sure this hasn't been bent over. All this is is it's here to keep your filter, your air filter, from sucking into the motor. It holds it out so that it can keep the airflow. All right, I want to show you something here to check once you get this back together. Your primer bulb, if you look in here, it's behind that little bracket thing I showed you there to hold your air filter out. What your primer bulb does is push fuel into the carburetor here. I don't know how well this will show up, but yeah, you can see fuel squirting up in that little brass piece back in the back of the car. Before you put your air cleaner and everything back together here, just check that. Just push your primer bulb and just look in here and you should be able to see that squirting fuel up. All right, once you get that in there, put your air filter back in, in the bottom there, and then we'll drop this thing down here and see if it works. All right, moment of truth here. Let's see what we got here. Prime that about three tons. machine this mower here is one that i bought from another guy in my neighborhood who also works on mowers he specializes in hondas i went and picked this one up he says he took it in on trade for a honda he sold non-running i think i've got everything here to fix it so I'll go ahead and get it back together here and see what we got it was a part when he got it so you never know what you're getting into in that situation so we'll play around with it here and see what we got I'll show you this carb when I get it off here, but it looks like it has dried jelly or something in it. Let's air cleaner housing out of the way. You don't have to take this off, but get it out of here to make it easier. I don't know anything about the fuel in this. So I'm going to drain the fuel out of it. It's just an old flower vase. I like to use something like this, so when you drain the fuel out of it, get it and see if it's got any water or contamination or anything in it. It doesn't look like any water. It smells pretty decent. Well, actually, there is some water in there. I don't know how well that'll show up on camera, but if I swirl it around the bottom there, you can probably see it. Start fresh. No sense in fighting a problem that you don't have to fight. All right, now, like I said, somebody else has had this apart. You can see here your connection is missing. In fact, I think all the linkage, everything's probably missing. You can tell by the inside of that carburetor. Been sitting for a while, pretty gummed up. Definitely missing the linkage here. There's no linkage from the governor to the carburetor, and everything on top of the carburetor is missing. So there has to be a rod with a spring on it, goes from here to there. I just had one with this same engine in here a couple days ago. I should have looked at that linkage if I'd have realized that was all missing. That's when you know a carburetor's gummed up, when you can barely turn that. This thing is, uh, Looks like somebody has put molasses syrup in this thing. For the fun of it, let's pull this bowl off this carburetor and see what this thing looks like in here. Oh, it's a beautiful thing. Nothing like a little jelly in your carburetor. Probably fuel treatment. Anyway, the way the tops broke off on this, I don't have the linkage for that. This is this motor is a power mower. It's made exclusively by MTD, I assume in China, and there the website says Asia. But this is an aftermarket carburetor, is all I could find for this thing. But it's got the linkage on it here. Should have everything we need. I'll have to make some linkage for it. I could not find a linkage rod for this particular mower. But what I'll do is take 16 gauge baling wire. Pretty flexible right now, but I'll show you how to harden this up once we get it formed. And I'm gonna cut that a little bit long. You know, something else I guess I need to check here. Make sure the air cleaner doesn't interfere with anything I'm doing here. Yeah, that should be out of the way, so that ain't gonna matter. All right, what I'll have to do here is wing this a little bit. We'll slide this carburetor on here. 
I do not have the original linkage for this thing to see how it's supposed to be made. But what I'll do is bend this thing to fit it here. That closes the throttle there, pushing that forward, close it. So what we'll want to do is open the throttle all the way up and pull the governor linkage back. And then I'll cut my rod so that when this is all the way back and this is all the way wide open, that should be wide open throttle. That in that governor, so put that right there. I'm gonna leave just a little bit extra on here. There's two holes in this governor linkage back here too. I don't know if we need the top one or the bottom one. i do a little experiment in here. I don't really see any wear marks on it to tell which one it was originally running in. One of them's probably a spring and one of them's probably the linkage. I think the rod will work in either one of them. Okay, so when the governor kicks on, that should push that forward. So I think we can make this work. Just put what's called a Z-bend in that. All right, so fish that down through there. That, way that can't come out. And hook this end on this side. And when you're hooking this up, you can pull that governor forward a little bit too. That's full range on that throttle, so I think that'll work. All right, what I did here is purposely left this rod a little bit long so that when the governor closes all the way, you want to make sure that closes. Now, after I harden that, I can just take a pair of pliers and put a little bend in it and tighten it up. So it's not critical that we get that exactly the right length, but I wanted to get it close before I harden it up. put some heat on this thing. I'll get this as straight as I can. It's not just heating it, it's quenching it too. And the best thing to quench it with is oil. And I'll see, I think I've got some old motor oil or something here, but you want to get this red hot and then just drop it down into the oil. That's what I came up with there. It's got the little Z-bend in it for the carburetor end, and then we can finagle that into our carburetor. And then that end, I'll just bend it over, put it into that governor. So I may, probably won't need a spring. The governor does have a spring on it right here, so that should be enough. Straighten this out here as best I can. Put a little heat on it and then we'll quench it in oil to harden it up and temper it a little bit. It'd probably work fine the way it is. I just feel a little better about it if it's a little bit stiffer. All right, all I'm going to do here now, just take a torch. I'm going to heat this thing up red hot and then I'm going to dunk it in the oil. Now you can use water too, but oil does work better. Try to get the whole thing. I'm going to do one end at a time. I don't want to pour enough oil in here to do both of them together, but just heat that up red hot. And then dunk that in there real quick. And that'll harden this so it's more springy and doesn't deform if it gets kinked up. Turn that around and do the other side. torch is running out of fuel. Again, once you get that red hot, dunk it down in there. And that should make that a lot harder and a lot stiffer so it doesn't bend when it's working as a linkage rod. That should show you there. Much more springy. Not as likely to bend and holds its shape better. Alright, what we'll do now is get this into the governor into this thing. And just like you would with a normal rod, just put that down on there. Slide that together so it's all the way closed there. It should be all the way open there. That ought to do it. We shall find out anyway. What I'm going to do is just bolt this carburetor on without the air cleaner on it. Just tighten it down here. We may have to adjust it. You got your idle adjustment and your jet adjustment there. Bolt that down. See if we need to make any adjustments to that linkage or anything else here. Make sure our primer's working. So we'll just get that tightened down there and drop this thing down here and run it and see how it works. Should work pretty good. 
One thing I've learned on these aftermarket carburetors that have adjustment screws on them, these screws are almost never adjusted where they need to be to get this thing to run. This one, I actually screwed it all the way in just to see where it was at. It was almost seven turns out, so they pretty much just stuck the screw in. What I did was turn this all the way in, turn that all the way in, and then backed it out about two full turns. And what that'll do is open that up just enough to get it to run. Now, the other thing I did is, this is your idle screw. I adjusted this in so it's sticking out so that it won't idle down. That'll get me to where I can start this thing. I'll go ahead. We'll try to prime it here. I didn't show you, but the primer is working. It is squirting gas in there. You can see plenty of gas. My goal is, once I get this started here, to get this to where you can rev this up, hit it, hit the throttle pretty quickly. It'll hesitate a little, but it should rev up pretty easy. And then once I get it to where it revs up and everything runs fine, then I'll adjust this idle down if I need to. 34 to 3600 RPM, and then when it's under load, the governor should push this forward. And my linkage on my governor seems to be working fine. We'll start it up here. This is electric start, but it's got a dead battery on it, so I'll have to pull start it here. Alright, in hindsight here, I probably should have left this screw where it was at when I got started. What I did was I cranked it in before I tried to start it based off my experience with other carburetors. This is not a carburetor I work with very often, but it was about seven turns out when I started. I turned it into about one and a half, which leaned it out way too much. To get it running, what I was trying to do there, hit that throttle, and it should be fairly responsive. It's, it's going to fluctuate a little bit, and we also don't have an air cleaner on here, so there's no restriction. It's straight air right in there. But when you open that up, it, it'll hesitate a little, but it should rev up to full throttle. If you hit this and it acts like it's running out of gas, crank this screw out. If you hit this and it acts like it just bogs down, you're putting too much fuel in it and may even see some black smoke come out. But you want to adjust that so that when you hit that throttle, it revs up pretty consistently and it doesn't try to die if you just hold it there for a second. Now, you don't want to blow this motor up, so don't hold it there too long, but just rev it up real quick, let off of it, and you'll see how it's doing. But, but the way that is right there now, it should run fine. All right, now that we got that all back together, our linkage is working good there. I bent this over a little bit more on this end, so there's no way it'll come out of that governor. Another issue I had with this mower is it did not have a cover for the air cleaner. I've got the housing, but what I found is I have an old Kohler, and this cover will fit. It's almost a perfect fit. Uh, and I also found that a Kohler air cleaner is actually exactly the right size for this. So I think that's kind of based off of a Kohler. But what I'm gonna do here, use the Kohler air cleaner cover. The bolt hole for this one is here. What I'm gonna do is just pop this little uh, thumb screw out. And then once I get this on, I'm just gonna run a tie strap or a wire tie through there. 
obviously not going to do it now because I still got to bolt this on from the outside. I mean, it's going to look a little tacky, but it's really all I've got. Like I said earlier, this is a power more motor made exclusively for MTD in Asia, and I cannot find parts for it. You can't find covers. Even this carburetor was tough to find. Finally found it on Amazon, and I'll put a link to it down below. Can't find that linkage rod, but anyway, the cover for a Kohler 173cc engine, I believe, is what this was off of. I think it came off of a Cub Cadet push mower. And when you put this back on too, there is a little hose right here with a clamp on it. Make sure you put that all the way on there. All right, and I do have a new gasket for this also. Seal this off from your air cleaner housing a little bit better. Primer tubes hooked up, fuel lines hooked up, crankcase vents hooked up. All right, and like I said, that air filter fits right in there. That is actually a Kohler air filter, but it fits right in this power more. And the way this is open here, you got plenty of room for the air. I don't know how well that'll show up, but you got room for the air to get down in here to the filter. So this should work perfectly. Act clips on this end are exactly the same as a Kohler. It's about an inch longer, but other than that, in a tie wrap, nobody's ever going to know the difference. Well, that seals down real well. Almost looks original. You have to be really careful with these because they just tighten down into plastic. Get it down here one more time and fire it up and see what we got. This is an electric start. This battery is no good, but I did jump start it earlier and made sure it worked. I'll put a new battery in it before I sell it. This one here, another one that needs a new carb. Get it up here and get a carb on it. This is a Toro. It's an older Toro with a Briggs six horsepower motor on it. Pretty sure I already drained the gas out of this one. Definitely got some rusty, nasty looking gas in it. But anyway, I'll throw that in the parts bin for this winter and we'll grab another one. So for what you can do in five minutes, just swapping a new carb on there, you end up taking the time to uh, clean that thing. You're gonna be here for another at least 30 minutes, even if you're really good at it. That's why I like to just take the time in the off seasons. As I will tell you too on these uh, gaskets here for this, I don't only go in there one way, but pay attention to this channel right here. When you press your primer bulb, it creates vacuum or suction and actually pressurizes this to blow fuel into your carburetor. That's how your primer bulb works. So when you put this gasket on there, make sure you get that centered and make sure it's all the way down on there because if it's not, your primer will not work. And now I will also tell you, sometimes these plastic housings will get bent or warped from heat. And I've had to put two gaskets on here to space this up a little bit. So if you've got a mower that's not priming the way it should, you may have to take and put a second gasket on here. Now, I would not recommend using any kind of Permatex or anything, because if you get any of that down in that channel or this tiny little hole right here, let me show you on the carburetor. That hole right there, right below your bolt hole, that's that has to pressurize to create the prime. And you'll see inside this carburetor, I think I showed you on the earlier mower there, if you look inside there, once you get it back together, you should see fuel squirting up out of that little hole. And, and you know, down here is critical. That's that's where it's gonna seal to create your prime. Comes with a new O-ring. Go ahead and pull this one off here. You know, if they're dried out or anything, this one doesn't feel too bad, but we got a new one here, so we'll put a new one on it. Pull that off. You can see that one's kind of flattened out. That's the one I just pulled off of there. But go ahead and put your new one on. Nothing worse than getting this all together and then realizing you got to pull it back apart because your O-ring didn't work. But anyway, get your linkage back in here. Finagle that on there. Line your carburetor up with the O-ring and the holes. Put your bolts back in it. Literally a five six seven minute job depending on how hard it is getting bolt holes lined up and getting that gasket on there but again that's got an o-ring so 
all you're doing is snugging this down enough so it doesn't vibrate loose. You're not trying to crank it down. That's the number one thing I see with new mechanics working on this stuff is they over tighten almost everything that they touch. The way I look at it, if you're new, you can always come back later and tighten it up again if you have a problem. But if you strip it out, you're gonna have issues that are very hard to correct. Not impossible, but your fuel line back on. Yeah, and I've already got a new filter in here, air filter. This is one I've already worked on earlier this season and didn't have the carburetor for it. Make sure you get your, your tube lined up from your crankcase to your filter housing here. Did not replace that primer bulb. This primer bulb looks like it's been recently replaced. I'm gonna do this just so I can make sure that that primer is working before I get it all back together and put it down on the ground here to try it out. All right, again, before you put your air cleaner back on, test your primer bulb here. Plenty of fuel coming out of that, so make sure that's squirting out before you put your air cleaner and everything back together because you don't want to get it all back together and then find out it's not working. New air filter here and get this back together here and we'll see how she runs. Funny when you work on this many mowers. I know I ordered parts for it a while back, but you forget what you've already tried and what you haven't tried. Generally, I'll try to start them with a little splash of gas or starting fluid or something. I assume I've already done that with this one, but I honestly don't remember. Hit the primer here a couple times. I think I already primed it plenty while I was testing it. She sounds good. All right, in closing here, I just want to say thanks for watching. This was just a quick little day to try to get some mowers out of the shop so I can get some bigger projects in here and start getting some good videos going. If you have some projects you're working on, leave me some comment details on what you're working on down below, maybe some things you'd like to see, some advice maybe you've got on some of the things I did today that you would have done differently. You know, I'm open to all those suggestions and comments down below. I also want to give a shout out to about three channels here that I've gotten to know a little bit. Some of these guys, smaller channels, really looking for subscribers and some watch time. If you want to check them out, one of the channels is Chris X Outdoors up in Michigan. Chris seems to be a really good family guy. He's got over 50 videos posted on his channel. And I do have a section on my homepage of my channel called Inspirational Channels. And all these channels are in that link down there, as well as some other ones. But Chris, last I checked, I think he had about 330 subscribers. So hopefully by the time you see this, that's gone up a little bit. He tries to post a video every week. Chris X Outdoors. Another one is Andrew out in Arizona. The only small engine repair guy I know that just cut grass for the first time last week because he doesn't have grass in Arizona. I think last time I checked his he was just over 500 so hopefully again when you look at this she'll be up from there. He also does a live stream and I think just about anybody's welcome to jump onto that so if you want to get on there ask some questions about small engine repair, his adventure on YouTube. You may even see me on there occasionally. I know Chris gets on there. Check it out. Good little channel. I think he posts more than a video every week so if you got time check that one out. And then the last one, the lawnmower lady. This lady is really awesome. She she is a very good mechanic. She gets into a lot of little projects. She's not afraid to get her hands dirty, guys. And I'll tell you what, she's got some good videos too. So if you get a chance, check her out. I think last time I looked, she was about 360, 370 subscribers. So hopefully she's up from there. And again, just thanks for watching. This has really been fun for me. I enjoy doing it. It's something I'm doing anyway. It's something I do for fun. So I'm looking forward to sharing a lot more projects. Thanks again, guys. Until next time, we'll see you.